right, hey guys, it's Trevor from Smashworks. You're here in the uh, inner sanctum. You're at my house. We're gonna go over some um, some knee issues. I had a really good friend of mine, um, Margo Alvarez, actually. Everybody that does CrossFit knows who she is, three times game athlete, uh, probably one of my closest friends. Uh, Margo, I know you're gonna be watching this because this is all for you and uh, the knee issue that you're asking me about. So we're gonna go over it, we're gonna fix it, and uh, we're gonna help our star athlete make it on the podium this year. Um, so first thing I want to show you is this, you got to see this. So I want you to watch This is my son. So he plays video games jumping. Only a son of a CrossFitter would do that. Um, full on too. I mean, it's great. No knee problems with him. He's five. Um, so what, what I wanted to talk about is she said she's got some cracking sounds in the knees, some creaking sounds, a dull ache. I had her send me a couple of videos of her doing a squat from the side, from the front, from the back, just cause I wanted to see what was happening. And, uh, and some of the stuff that, uh, that I went over with her, uh, as far as breaking down her squat, um, we don't need to cover cause we went through some squat mechanics in the last couple of videos. But what I want to show you is how to handle some of that creaky knee, some of that dull ache, even a sharp ache, or even if you get a knee tweak. And, uh, and I'll show you what to do. It's super easy and, uh, and the stuff's really effective, so really pay attention. Um, first things first, if you wanna look at squat position, just really quick, I'll, I'll cover this part and then, uh, and then I know I just said I wasn't gonna cover that, but it's something that's really important. A lot of people, what they have is, is what's called a, um, a navicular collapse and they have a little bit of a valgus knee and we've covered this too a lot. And it's, it, can be, it can be very, very slight, but think about this, when you're going through repetition after repetition, um, all these revolutions, all these cycles that we go through in motion, uh, they break down a joint, they break down the integrity, and your body's set up to do only so many repetitions and so many revolutions before it breaks down. And so if you're in proper mechanics and everything's working the way it's supposed to, you can do this for a really long time. If you're doing this in a bad position, your body's still going to find a way to get you to go through that motion, but it's going to be at your expense. And eventually knee cartilage wears out, meniscus, meniscus tear is a guarantee. Um, ACL, MCL, PCL, all those ligaments that hold that, uh, that knee together are, uh, are going to be compromised and eventually fail. And then never mind the fact that the foot, all its 26 bones, adapting to the terrain 10, 20, 30,000 times a day with all the steps and the activities that we're taking as an athlete, um, that's not gonna work either. And you're gonna start to develop this really gnarly bunion on the back of the heel where that heel cord is coming in, the Achilles tendon is coming in. So if this is the inside of the knee, and, and I'll show you actually, we can just go like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here. So if you look at my foot here, this is my Achilles, okay? So if we look at the Achilles, Good, there we go. Trying to make sure you can see this. You look at the Achilles, if it comes in like this and I'm collapsing my foot, that that tendon, if I'm gonna give it a shove, that giant tendon's gonna kick over to this side and it's gonna start to develop a really, really gnarly growth right here that's gonna be, it's gonna be just a, a weakness. You're never ever gonna get rid of that. So you're gonna have to make sure that this stays, has its uh, keeps its integrity. So the more this foot turns in, the more strain there's gonna be right here on this heel cord. And then we have another one too. So if we look at the foot from the top, there we go. So we look at the foot from the top, there's a good arch in here because I'm torquing out against the floor. But when that collapses, it does this. So if you look at that normal, good arch, torqued out, spreading the floor apart, as it collapses, it does this. This is called, if, if I had a big bony outgrowth right here, there's the navicular sits right in here. What that's called is a navicular collapse. So what happens is as we lose the integrity of the joint, as we lose the integrity of our squat, this tends to fall inwards and uh, it puts a lot of strain on the foot. And now all of a sudden, this is our weak squatting position. And this is what we default to a lot of times when we start to get tired, when we're, when we're under what's called a metabolic load. Uh, metabolic load means that we've done all the things we're going to do throughout the, the course of a workout and we're called upon to do some more squats and we're so tired that we can't maintain this so we default into a bad habit. Now if we have a good habit and we repeat this over and over again and I'll tell you this right now, um, the, the, one of the best athletes I've ever met in my entire life is Margo. Um, I've learned a ton from her. She's, I, I've listened to her training and, and Alex as well um, in, in teaching me so many things. They got me to do double unders uh, because of Alex and, uh, and now I can, I can do hundreds of them in, in a row without any problems. And I sent them videos for me in my garage. So this is one of the best athletes in the world. You guys who know who Margo Alvarez is know that she's probably one of the best on the planet. So when I say a compromised squatting position, it means that if there is a slight compromise in the squat, 
it's going to be because it's been completely metabolically taxed. Her body's been completely metabolically taxed. Whereas someone like you and I, it's going to hit us a lot earlier. But if you see how that collapses, that's going to put strain on the knee. So one more time, I'm going to put the camera down so you can see this. All right. So if we look at the knee, good. If we look at the knee here, this is the knee. This is normal. So we have this nice straight tibia. What happens is it's going to turn in. It's going to turn in. If you see what happens with my foot, if, my, if you see what happens with my foot, it's going to collapse right here. It's going to put a lot of strain in here. And, uh, and it's going to put a lot of strain on the inside of the knee right in here. And the knee's not going to track right. So the patella is not going to sit properly. The quadriceps aren't going to pull right. These giant glutes that are trying to drive us up aren't going to have the, um, the ability to transmit all this force into the ground at 100%. You'll be running at more like 60 or 70. And you'll be dumping all this horsepower out of the, all these joints that are, that are trying to compromise themselves to at least get you off the ground. So the problem is, is that when I see a squat and I see somebody and they get into a decent squat position and they drop into the hole and the, the feet turn out the way they're supposed to and you're torquing against the ground and then you do this and you drop into that squat. This is normal squat position. The problem is, is when they do this even slightly. So if you have one knee that tends to come in, you're gonna have a collapse here, you're gonna have pain here. It's gonna cause a lot of problems with the knee. So here's what I would suggest to do. All right, so first thing we grab, grab our voodoo band, we'll go over this in a second, but what I wanna do is attack that knee first. We'll address mechanics in a second, but you're gonna take this and you're gonna run it. I'm gonna bring this up right here. You're gonna run it all along what's called the super patellar pouch. So if I extend my leg like this, you're gonna go all along the top right here. And the way you do that is you're gonna tack it down. We're gonna do it on my left leg. You're gonna put the ball down. You're gonna get over that. Bring that up just so you can see. And you're gonna get right up, you're gonna approximate as close as you can to that patella without grinding away on that patella itself. And then you're just gonna do this. You're gonna get on the inside, go ahead and grind away, get on the outside, move all the way out, take it through full ranges of motion if you can, and just smash away. Now I showed another way of doing this and I'm just gonna run over it really quick, where I was sitting on a high box and I took the lacrosse ball and I put it inside where the, uh, where the sleeve of the um, barbell goes and it fits almost perfectly and I took a 45 and I put it on there and I hung my leg down and I just went through ranges of motion all over the place getting this to really, really strip out all the ugly little sticky bits that are in this knee. And it's right up in here where this becomes tendinous and you lose a lot of the musculature of this because the muscles all sit up here. There's a lot of tendon right here and basically the tendon here, it's what's called a giant sesamoid bone. So the bone itself is encapsulated in a tendon. So it's very restricted all on its own. So it has to maintain its integrity. So you need to get all those tissues loose and sliding the way they're supposed to. So you're gonna do that. Honestly, two, three minutes, as everybody says, do it until you make change. So make sure you do that. That's step number one. The next thing you wanna do is, most people forget the high hip. So we have the glute med, we have the TFL, and we have that IT band that runs down to the lateral portion of the knee here. Well, what that's gonna do, when it's tight, is it's gonna valgus that knee the same way. So it's gonna pull your knee in like this. You're gonna put a lot of strain on both sides of the knee, but it's gonna make you fall into that squat as well. So the great way to get this to move around is you're gonna put the lacrosse ball down. I'm gonna shove this out of the way. You're gonna take this, get high on that hip. You're gonna take your other leg, you're gonna trap that knee so it can't migrate out. And then you're gonna take your foot and you're gonna turn it up. So I'm gonna move up just a little bit because you guys can't see that and I'm running out of room. So all the way high on the hip, the foot's gonna to wanna to turn out like that. I want you to take it and trap it in like this and then turn it up while you're sitting straight. Just keep your hand on the knee and then just smash away. All you have to do is grind away on that spot. So what I'm doing, just so I can come back into the frame, not as well thought out as I thought when I put the uh, camera up against the ottoman. So you're gonna get onto that high hip, that glute med and that TFL. You can see where the ball is right down here. Trap the leg, turn it up, and then just grind away. I don't advise doing it on carpet because it, it just doesn't have, it's too forgiving. So grind away on that until you get some change. Find those little hot spots and you'll know a spot you find because it'll hurt like hell. So do that two, three minutes. And I'll get up real close. You're gonna do it all along the top here. So basically just outside, if your back pocket was right here on your pants, you're just gonna go just outside. There's gonna be a big bunch of tissue right there, just a big meaty chunk of your glute right here. 
that's the glute mead and that TFL. It's going to take a lot of the strain off that, um, or the glute mead and the, yeah, and the, and the TFL. It's going to take a lot of the strain off that IT band right here. So last thing is flossing that knee. So flossing the knee, I tend to start high and work my way down low, and I start in full extension. So you're going to take the voodoo band, you're going to bring it up, start just above the knee so we can trap that tissue, including that super patellar pouch. You're going to go around the knee. This is so easy to do yourself, and it's so incredibly uncomfortable and probably one of the most effective things. You're going to go all the way around. You're using maybe 50 60% tension on the band. I tend to put more tension on the sticky bits of tissue and less tension on the bone itself. So across the patella itself, I'm not gonna trap that patella. I want it to have that free range of motion. And then I'm gonna come all the way around like this. You're gonna go all the way around to the bottom. What I do is I take my thumb, put it in here so it creates a space. I'm gonna come all the way around, take that, tuck it in underneath just like that, and then all you're gonna do is, I'm gonna leave this up so you can see, is you're gonna get down into the bottom of that squat. Now this is putting crazy force and compression on that, and we went over the mechanics of, um, of the voodoo band back in an earlier video, and I want you to find all those spots. Like, get in them, grind around, hunt around, turn them out, turn them in, take them through ranges of motion. Remember, you have to get this to move, so I would bounce around in a squat, for about two or three minutes until you get changed. But make sure you're going through full ranges of motion. The only way a voodoo band works is through full ranges of motion. If you just put it on and camp out with it just wearing, you're not gonna do anything to that joint, whatever the joint is. You can voodoo band just about every, anything on your body. Um, so what you wanna do is tack down that tissue, take it through ranges of motion. You're gonna get on that super patellar pouch, all right? You're going to use this lacrosse ball. You're going to grind away on it until you make some changes. And then you're going to get on that high hip, which is going to release that TFL. And then make sure that you're torquing out on the floor and take your shoes off, take your socks off, do a squat in front of a video and see how you're doing. If you squat in front of that video and you see that navicular collapse, or if you squat in front of a video and you see that knee come in even just a slight little bit, or if you see the foot come up, you're torquing out too much. Take a look at that, and uh, and then you can always email me, text me, call me, whatever you need to do. Send me a smoke signal. I'll get back to you. I'll make a video for you. All right, I'm Trevor from Smashworks. Saturday. Have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.